Hey, Dave Austin here. And in keeping with my promise, 12 o'clock on Mondays, Pacific Standard Time, I'm bringing my game ready to you. Set your whole week up. Put this in your calendar because this is only a few minutes to kind of set your whole week. I guarantee you that if you do this regularly, your life will change for the better. Now, I always throw in a subject matter when I, when I do these. And today is really fascinating. I love this subject matter. Um, and it's the year of the comeback. So, um, hey, Julie, how you doing? Always glad to have you on, Julie. So let's, let's think about this, the year of the comeback. So it all started in Cleveland. Cleveland was down. Hey, Tim, good to have you on. Always good. Emmanuel, man, you're starting to come on. I love it. So we're talking about the year of the comeback. So it started and oh, Creed Morris, man, there's the champion of champions, taking so many high school quarterbacks to the next level. I love it. Thanks, Kathy. Can't mention all of it because I got to get into the story. But anyway, it started in Cleveland. Cavaliers are down 3 1. Now, never in the history of NBA finals has anybody come back from that deficit. And guess what? The Cavaliers came back. It was an amazing, amazing NBA Finals. And, I mean, they did it against the, the Golden State Warriors, the winningest team in NBA. So that started the, the whole kind of journey off. And then, all of a sudden, we had the World Series. And we had Chicago and Cleveland. And guess what? Chicago was down 3-1. And there's only, in, in studying the history of World Series, only 12% teams have ever been able to come over that deficit. And Chicago especially was fighting this since it was the last time they won a championship uh, or World Series was in uh, 1908. But they did it. They came through. And then just last week, last Sunday, down 25 points in the third quarter, in the middle of the third quarter. Think about this. In the middle of the third quarter. The Patriots came back and won the game. One of the most dramatic comebacks in the history of NFL football Super Bowl. In fact, it's the only time, the first time ever, that we've seen an overtime game. Now, are all these connected? Is there some kind of mysterious way that they're all part of the journey together? Well, I'll tell you, from my point of view, absolutely. Now, I'm a mental performance coach, and I study this kind of stuff. For the last 30 years, I just, you know, some people like to, you know, work on their car and really know their car. Some like to do certain things and aspects of, of life that, you know, painters really dive into it. Well, I get excited about diving into the subconscious mind, and I watch for patterns. And that's why I feel like um, what I'm able to do now is such a gift to others because I do it every day. I study it every day. So let me tell you how the three championships are absolutely related. And if you want more of this, I wrote a blog on it that's just out today. And if you go to extremefocus.com, you'll get a little bit more than what I'm gonna be able to share to you right now in this moment. So how are these three possibly related? Well, I'll tell you what, working with professional athletes, I know one thing, they all admire other athletes and that time that Cleveland was playing the seventh game and that three point you know shot was hit to win it come back create this this historical moment for Cleveland well most of the Cubs were watching that game most of the Patriots were watching that game because when it comes down to championships on any level athletes pro athletes love to be watching it so now in their subconscious mind they've seen this amazing comeback okay then comes the Cubs. They're playing and they're down one to three, but now you gotta realize it's stored. Whether it's conscious for them or not, it's stored in here of seeing this comeback. So now when it gets down to crunch time, it becomes more believable because our subconscious mind is always storing information. Now here's the trick. You gotta really be prepared for it to really pay out your dividends because you have to be prepared for it. What I mean by preparation, when you're a hard worker, like the Cubs, you know, I saw them in spring training. They were, and not every team does this, but you work overtime to, to, to achieve great success. And so what happens is, is now you're at that moment where you're about ready to quit or rise up. Now, deep in your subconscious mind, you've got this 
Wait, I saw Cleveland do this. Whether you're aware of it or not, it now the unbelievable becomes believable. Now that collides with your preparation, your hard work, your dedication, and now the possibility. All of a sudden, instead of quitting, you're rising up because you have this subconscious support system that's going to keep you moving forward. And so then comes Sunday, the Super Bowl. And I mean, down by 25 points, no one's ever come back from that in the Super Bowl, especially that late in the third quarter. Tom Brady is going along the side, sidelines yelling to his teammates, what a great opportunity for a comeback, guys. Great opportunity for a comeback. So what's he doing? He's triggering this subconscious mind with all those know that now, instead of going, gee, I guess we just weren't good enough. Man, the Falcons were just too good. All of a sudden, it shifts the mindset into thinking, wow, this, is, this can be believable if we stay focused on what's here, present at hand. Think of Roger Bannister when he ran the four-minute mile. No one thought it was possible. No one thought it was possible. Yet he did it. You know, back then, but you might not know this, back then they thought that if you ran a four-minute mile, the human body couldn't take it, and it would collapse and probably die. So there's a little bit of fear factor in there, too. But Roger did it. Do you know the very next race, the very next race, another gentleman broke the four-minute mile? And then so many have gone on to break the four-minute mile because it became believable. Our subconscious minds are absolutely phenomenal. In my article today, uh, I talk about when I played professional tennis. I'm not going to give you that story right now, but that's in the article. It blows my mind because I can remember it so exact. What changed something when I was about ready to lose, and I was losing bad, something shifted in me. You'll read about it, and all of a sudden I came back and made the possible when it seemed completely impossible. We can all do that in our lives, but that's why I do these game readies. I do them because when you train, by doing the visualizations, you're training your subconscious mind to see it so it becomes familiar with you achieving that which you really want to achieve. It now gives you the opportunity to achieve it because that it's, it's really when you get to that pressure point, when it's right there where, oh my God, I don't know. I just don't know. But if you've been seeing it, the subconscious mind now is going to support you and it's going to go, yeah, you got this. You got this. Many of you maybe have heard me say when I played on the senior tour and I became number one, I visualized all the time winning tournaments because I realized I hadn't won a lot of tournaments. Yeah, I had been a world-ranked tennis player, but I had never won any major tournaments. But I started visualizing and seeing it so that my subconscious mind got familiar with it. And remember, your subconscious mind doesn't know what's real or isn't real. So if you feed it negative stuff, which most of us do all the time, it believes it fully. Our words are so powerful. We might say something, oh, I always, you know, do this at this moment. Well, but just by saying that, you've now given your chance to, to fall prey to this always because words are powerful. And your subconscious mind is always listening. But now if you're feeding it with seeing you win, like I did, I saw myself finally win these tournaments. You know, in fact, when I was 36 years old, I was in the finals of a pro tennis tournament. Now, I'd already been retired. A sponsor had asked me, flew us up to Vancouver in Canada to be a part of it. And so we got to the finals, my doubles partner and I. We're playing the number one team in the world. The number one team in the world. Now, when I was playing on the pro circuit, I would have never beaten them because I didn't have a belief system that supported that it was possible that I could do that. But now, because I had gotten so good at visualizing, we won that tournament. I actually beat the number one team. That year at the U.S. Open, they were the number one seed at the U.S. Open. So that was a much bigger win than I ever, ever had when I was playing professional tennis. But I learned the power and the secret of seeing it in my mind. So, did the Cleveland Cavaliers start something that the Cubs absolutely saw in their own minds? And then New England did the same thing? I don't think there's any coincidence in it. I... As I say, I study the subconscious mind. I study patterns, and I absolutely see it. Whether they're aware of it or not, I know it to be true. I know it to be fact. It makes it so believable. It's amazing how powerful our minds truly are. And that's what I love, is to give you a kind of a new vision on what is possible. So you ready to do the game ready? Ready to vision that which you love? Ready to take that step, and, 
excuse me, just step into this. So now I'm going to say, before you even close your eyes into this visualization that we're going to do the game ready, I want you to just take this moment and allow yourself just to think about the things you're grateful for. Mm. What are the things you're grateful for? Because there's a whole power in that. Most people don't even understand the power of gratitude. So just take this moment right now mm. and just allow yourself to think about those things that, oh, I am so blessed. I'm so blessed to have this. And I think I, I see Michael Slater, good friend from a long time ago. Would love to reconnect with you. I see these pictures of his kids that are just amazing, amazing. So Michael, just think about how awesome it is the, the kids that, that, that you have and how awesome what I can see that the, you know, the postings, some amazing things that they're already doing at a young age. So tap into that strength. Tap into the power of gratitude. Doesn't matter what you have to face this week when you have allowed yourself to just, ah, God, there's so many things I'm grateful for. Now you have a whole new energy, a whole new power to take on this week with a stronger strength. Now go ahead, and what I want you to do is now close your eyes. As you close your eyes, I want you to see a gate. And as you see your gate, I want you to pass through your gate. And as you pass through your gate, any kind of gate, you're the architect. Go through that gate and come into this place in beauty in nature. Nature loves to be appreciated. So it can be a place you've been to before, be combination of places. Just take a deep breath of this beauty you, that you've just put yourself in. It's amazing how you can just come here. The more you do this, the more comfortable you get with it. And you can just allow yourself to just take in the beauty and get connected to it. Now, nature loves to be appreciated. So now it just radiates this energy. Start allowing that energy to just fill you up. Breathe it in. Breathe through your nose all the way to the pit of your stomach and breathe out. Man, the power you're receiving right now goes way beyond anything that your regular conscious mind can even grasp. But you're breathing in something that's going deeper than that. It's allowing you to tap into what I call your bigger self. That's always there for you. For me, it's my relationship with God. I open up to hear a strength and feel a strength that goes way beyond me. I, I, I have limits, but God doesn't. So when I allow myself to just take that in, oh my gosh, all of a sudden there's a new reborn strength in me. So now walk in that strength and walk into, see another gate at the other end. Now when you go through that gate, there you are in your life. And I want you to see yourself performing at your highest good, whatever, if you're, if you're a business consultant, if you're in real estate, which I know a lot, some of you are that are on this call. Are you, if you're an artist, are you a football player, a baseball player? Many of you on this that I've seen join are fit into that. And some of you are, you know, whatever it is, see yourself, oh man, living at the highest because remember I talked about preparation meeting opportunity? It's like you work and love what you do and you're willing to give into it so that all of a sudden an opportunity arises and I want you to see yourself taking advantage of that opportunity, just like the great comeback. It's like it's here for you, but you've prepared for it. So when it collides with the opportunity, see yourself going, wow, I'm so glad and so blessed that I was completely ready to jump on this because you're creating the opportunity. By seeing in your mind, you're now creating some magical opportunity to come forth in your life. And it can happen this week. You don't have to wait to the future. Start living this and start seeing it. Maybe all of a sudden you see something you hadn't seen before. See that and just be grateful that you're so prepared to grab hold of this opportunity and move into the next and greatest vision of you. So just feel that for a moment. Take that in. Mm. Life is so good because you're, you're allowing yourself to, to, to get an inner confidence in you that you're stronger than you've ever felt. It's because you're surrendered to the strength that's always there for you, but you're not allowing it to be blocked. You're allowing yourself to just act.